Hi, good evening all of you and today we will be discussing about the key questions and answers related to the process validation and uh, just a brief about me. My name is Hitendra Kumar Shah. I am a CJMP compliance consultant, trainer and auditor from NADH plus GXP compliance services. So let us move ahead about what type of questions we are going to discuss. So typically I selected today three questions. The question one is, is it mandatory that the suppliers of critical raw materials and packaging materials should be qualified before manufacturing of validation batches. Many companies, they have the procedure to have a provisional vendor or provisional suppliers while validation activity. So whether it is acceptable that we are going to discuss under this question and believe me, whatever I am going to discuss, it is exactly in line with the current guideline requirement. I will share the guideline references while discussing the expectation of the respective guideline. Okay. Second question is during commercial process validation, is it required to compare, evaluate and report the validation batches data with the test so exhibit or submission batches data? So as you are aware that First, we manufacture the test batches or exhibit batches and we perform the validation on the test batches. We submit all the documents to the regulatory agency for approval. Once we got the approval, we, uh, you know, we perform the commercial scale validation before commercialization, correct? So here the question is when I am performing the commercial process validation, that time should I compare, evaluate and report the validation data whether it is in line with the test batches or exhibit or submission batches or not. That is what the question. And the third question is, can we follow the bracketing approach during process validation studies? So, you know, most of the people, they know that the bracketing approaches are normally followed in, uh, uh, you know, the cleaning validations uh, or, you know, the stability studies and all, but whether it is applicable for uh, process validation that we are going to discuss today during this session. So it will be sh short discussion about 10 to 15 minutes, not more than that. So before going ahead, I am just uh, displaying the disclaimer that whatever I am discussing about the questions and their answers, they are exactly in line with the current guideline what are available today. Okay. So when you want to implement it, my suggestion or my request is to refer the current guideline and then only you need to re, uh, implement the things. So let us discuss about the first question. The first question is, is it mandatory that the suppliers of critical raw materials and packaging materials should be qualified before manufacturing of validation batches? The answer to this is yes. Very clear. Yes. So as per Utalix volume 4 Annex 15 guide, the suppliers of critical starting and packaging materials should be qualified before prior to the manufacture of validation batches. Otherwise, a justification based on application of quality risk management principles should be documented. So if the supplier is not qualified, you need to have a justification and the justification should be based on the quality risk management. So there is no any provision like you can have a provisional vendors or provisional suppliers and all qualified and not qualified. So uh, the qualified, the vendor should be qualified as per your procedure SOP. And this is what the expectation that whenever you are performing the validation, the critical raw materials and packaging materials should be qualified before validation batches manufacturing. Very clear answer by the UGMP and same is expectation by PIX guideline also. UGMP and PIX are, you know, very similar to each other. Okay. So I didn't put the reference of PIX, but PIX also uh, in line with the same. The next question is, during commercial process validation, is it required to compare, evaluate and report the validation batches data with the test exhibit or submission batches data. So already I explained you about the test batches, exhibit batches and submission batches. They are manufactured. Validation is performed. We submit this data to the agency. Once we got the approval, we, we go for commercial process validation. 
So the answer to this question is yes. We have to do this. Many companies lack this. What happened? Many companies, they just focus on critical process parameters and critical quality attributes. They compile in the <coughs> report and report is prepared. But this is not up to the mark. So this is exactly then with the FDA that a validated process should produce a dosage form that is directly related to the dosage form on which equivalency and or efficacy and safety were determined. This is usually the test batch, correct? So test batch we are performing the bio and all. So we have to compare this all the data in line with the test batches, exhibit batches and submission batches, whether it is in line with these batches or not. And that has to be reported also in the validation report. That is what the thing. Further FDA is clarifying same thing in more detail. Huh? So again, I'm telling you that <clears throat> many companies are lacking this. So what FDA is expecting? Compare the process used to make the test batch with the process that is used for routine full scale production batches. Which processes and specification must be equivalent. Therefore, the importance and the need for good control of the manufacturing process used to produce the test and clinical batches cannot be overemphasized. Very clear. Typically, the control of test batches includes, among others, drug substance, characterization, granule, granulation analysis, and dose uniformity and dissolution profile. So what parameter we need to verify? That also specified here. So what we have to verify? At least drug substance characterization, granulization, uh, granulation analysis, uh, uh, dose uniformity, dissolution profile that we have to compare with the test batches when you are manufacturing the commercial scale batches. Hope you are with me and you are getting the answer. See FDA is again clarifying the same thing again and again. Huh? The validation report, now we compare it, right? It can be put in the report. So the validation report should compare the manufacturing processes and specifications for the test batches to the full scale batches. So if you are not putting this comparison and details in the validation report, no problem. Such a finding may contain in other document. You may have the alternate document, no problem. But the point is, it has to be compared. That is what the FDA expectation. And if you are putting in the validation report, then it is well and good. FDA will request any evaluation that has been conducted on the equivalency of these batches and processes and review any tabulated data that shows the processing equivalency between the bio batches and validation batches. So FDA will request this and this is exactly in line with the FDA guideline. I just copy and pasted here to answer this question. Okay, these are not my words. Again, I'm telling you, these are not my words. Hope this question is clear now. So when you are performing the commercial scale validation batches, you have to compare manufacturing process and the specifications and the data, test data whether it is in line with the exactly the test batches or not and that you need to put in the report if you don't want to put it in the report you can have alternate document but the point is fda will request this evaluation and if you don't have this evaluation then you will be under trouble please be with me and understand this point very carefully right so now let us move to the you know the next question the next question is can we follow the bracketing approach during process validation studies? Again, the answer is yes, as per Utralex Volume 4, Annex 15 guideline. Okay. Process validation of new product should cover all intended marketed strengths and sites of manufacture. Bracketing could be justified for new products based on extensive process knowledge from the development stage in conjunction with an appropriate ongoing verification program. So if you are complying this, you need to have extensive process knowledge which is from the development stage and you are having the thorough ongoing process verification program, then yes, 
definitely you can go for a bracketing approach this is expected by the UGMP and same expectation is by the PIX guide also okay further further even WHO is also you know uh, uh, clarifying this so what further UGMP is expecting let us discuss this and then I will discuss about the WHO expectation also for process validation of products which are transferred from one site to another so most of the time you know the site transfers will be there or within the same site the number of validation batches could be reduced by the use of bracketing approach so number of batches can be reduced okay however existing product knowledge including the content of the previous validation should be available so whatever the existing product knowledge you have or that uh, confidence you can say is having so based on that you can you know uh, you can reduce or you can go for this bracketing approach okay different strength batch sizes and pack sizes or container types may be also use a bracketing approach if justified so you can apply the bracketing approach with respect to the different strength different uh, batch size or different uh, you know the container closure systems based on that also you can decide or you can have the bracketing approach also this is what they explain in the uh, you know the UGMP or you can say the PIX guide now WHO guideline also recommending same so many companies many people will say ki are but uh, you know we don't have the business in a uh, Europe market we have the business in a uh, uh, you know the um, other than the Europe and US market so then you need to comply the WHO requirement so as per WHO Annex 3 Appendix 7 guideline the validation should cover all the manufactured strains of a product and the extent of validation at each manufacturing site should be based on risk assessment a matrix approach or bracketing may be acceptable so again WHO is also accepting the bracketing and matrixing approach and should also be based on appropriate risk assessment so if you are having the appropriate risk assessment definitely you can follow the you know the matrix approach or you know bracketing you can do for the process validation hope you got the point now that you can follow the bracketing and matrixing for process validation also so how you can do simply you can perform the risk management you evaluate the risk and based on that if you can you if you understand that risk is low definitely you can go ahead for further details i suggest you can go through the learning ich q and d for bracketing and matrixing for stability studies so you will understand in a better way about the uh, you know the uh, these things and finally i just request all of you to please subscribe this youtube channel because many of you have not yet subscribed Thank you. Thank you so much and ensure all time compliance and please share this link to all of your colleagues so that they also can get clarity from this learning. Thank you so much.